When most people think about detoxing, they usually focus on the liver. And that makes sense. It's the most important elimination organ in your body. But the truth is, your kidneys are in a close second place. They work 24-7 to filter your blood, remove waste, balance minerals, and regulate fluid levels. Without healthy kidneys, your body simply can't stay clean. So let me show you how to support and detox your kidneys naturally. No gimmicks, no extreme cleanses, just a good proven protocol that works with your body instead of against it. To do this, we first need to understand how the kidneys work. There are two bean-shaped organs located in your lower back, just under your ribcage. They filter about 50 gallons or 190 liters of blood per day and produce one to two liters of urine. That's a lot. Here's an overview of what else they do. They remove waste like urea and creatinine. They filter out excess minerals and toxins. They balance electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and calcium. They regulate blood pressure and fluid levels. They help maintain your pH balance. They activate vitamin D and they make the hormone that helps you produce red blood cells. So yeah, they are a big deal. And if they're overworked, undernourished, or just dehydrated, they can't do their job properly. That's when toxins start to build up and symptoms can potentially show up. So things like fatigue, fluid retention, puffiness, or even high blood pressure. So what's the best way to detox them? It's all about supporting their natural function in the right sequence. Step one will always be hydration and fluid flow. This is the foundation. If you don't get this part right, nothing else matters. Your kidneys need water to flush out waste and toxins. And without enough of it, everything slows down and toxins just sit there. A lot of people are walking around slightly dehydrated and don't even realize it. If your urine is dark yellow or if you pee only a few times per day, that's a red flag. So the first step is simple. Just drink more clean water. Not energy drinks, not coffee, not soda, just water. If you're having problems with this, start your day with a big glass of water because many people who have problems reaching their daily intake find that it's easier to drink a lot right after waking up. You want to aim for half your body weight in ounces of water per day. That's about 30 to 35 milliliters of water per kilogram of body weight. Also, if you feel like your water goes right through you, then you can consider adding some electrolytes. More on that in a second. And don't forget that your kidneys also rely on your bowels and lymphatic system to do their part. So if you're constipated or your lymph is stagnant, then more pressure lands on your kidneys. That's why regular bowel movements and lymph support also matters. I have videos on all these topics that I will link in the description. The next step is to balance your electrolytes. Your kidneys constantly filter and rebalance electrolytes in your blood. When things get out of whack, so too much sodium, for example, or too much calcium and too little potassium or magnesium, then your kidneys struggle. If you research this, you will find that a lot of kidney stress actually comes from these mineral imbalances. The biggest one to look at would be, again, potassium, because most people don't get enough. It helps flush sodium and balance blood pressure. Good sources would be vegetables and some fruit. And if you eat a lot of vegetables, then make sure to cook them to make digestion easier. Sodium, of course, is also important to look at. Most people mess up their sodium-potassium balance by eating too much salty junk food, like chips, sauces, and fast food that can put stress on your kidneys. Try to cut back on processed foods and switch to a quality salt instead. Then we have calcium. Too much calcium, especially from supplements, can lead to buildup in the kidneys and even kidney stones. So always balance calcium with magnesium and vitamin K2 and also other important cofactors that keep calcium from building up in the wrong places. And lastly, magnesium. This is the great balancer. Like I said before, it keeps calcium in check and also supports blood flow and is involved in over 300 enzyme reactions. Like in the case of potassium, most people are borderline deficient. Now, you don't need to get obsessed with every single mineral or electrolyte. Just focus on eating mostly healthy food cut down on processed junk, and maybe add in a magnesium or a potassium supplement if you're low. If you're unsure, get them tested to know exactly what you need. Now, the third step then would be to remove kidney stressors. So this part is about taking pressure off. So if you've already opened up hydration and balanced your electrolytes, now it's time to reduce what's irritating them in the first place. 
Here are the biggest kidney stressors that you need to know. Again, would be chronic hydration, so drink your water. Oxalates, these are organic compounds found especially in spinach and beets. They can crystallize in the kidneys in sensitive people. And if you have a history of kidney stones or joint pain, definitely look into this. There are many ways to reduce oxalate buildup. The same applies to very high doses of vitamin C. Most people tolerate them fine, but they can theoretically convert into oxalates, especially if you're low in vitamin B6 or magnesium. Then we have NSAID, so non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen. These can reduce blood flow to the kidneys, and if possible, you want to avoid overuse. The last thing I want to talk about is protein. If your kidneys are functioning normally, then moderate or even high protein intakes are generally safe because your kidneys are built to handle the waste products that come from breaking protein down. But if your diet is very high in protein and you're not supporting hydration and mineral balance, then it can still create some extra workload. That's because a very high protein intake can lead to more nitrogen waste, so urea, and higher acid load, both of which the kidneys have to balance. So if someone who has already reduced kidney function, for example, from chronic kidney disease, then eats too much protein, it can speed up kidney decline. After all this, step four would then be to nourish and repair your kidneys. So once the basics are in place, now it's time to give your kidneys the nutrients that they need to repair and function well. The first one is vitamin B6. In the body, the oxalates that we talked about before are made from a substance called glyoxalate. Normally, the substance gets converted into something safe like glycine. But if that pathway doesn't work properly, glyoxalate turns into oxalates instead. Vitamin B6 helps make sure that pathway works fine. And this process mostly affects the oxalate that your body makes on its own, not the ones that you get from food. But still, reducing your internal oxalate production can make a big difference in lowering your total oxalate load. That's why vitamin B6 especially in its active form P5P, is often recommended for people with high oxalate levels or a history of kidney stones. Next, we have magnesium. Magnesium also helps prevent kidney stone formation by binding to oxalates in the gut, which then makes them easier to eliminate. It also helps balance calcium in the body, which then reduces the risk of calcium buildup in your kidneys. Like I said before, low magnesium levels are directly linked to higher rates of kidney stones, inflammation, and poor kidney function. Magnesium supports smooth muscle relaxation, which can help with healthy urine flow and will also reduce the pressure in your urinary tract. And as we discussed earlier, magnesium and potassium are often low in many people, so chances are if you're magnesium deficient, you're also potassium deficient. That's important to know because next to magnesium, potassium, especially in the form of potassium citrate, has also been found to reduce kidney stones, so consider that as well. The third nutrient I want to talk about is vitamin A. It helps protect and repair the delicate lining of the kidney tubules, which are responsible for filtering waste from your blood. Vitamin A supports the health of the epithelial cells, which line your entire urinary tract and act as sort of a barrier against damage and infection. A deficiency in it can increase the risk of kidney inflammation and even scarring. It also helps regulate the immune system, which plays a key role in preventing autoimmune damage to kidney tissue. So getting enough vitamin A will also support overall kidney structure and their function. On top of these three nutrients, there are also some other important cofactors, like omega-3s or antioxidants that help calm inflammation in your kidneys, and also coenzyme Q10 to boost energy production in their cells. But in general, the ones we just talked about, so B6, magnesium, potassium, and vitamin A, are probably the most important ones. The last step then is optional, but once the basics are dialed in, some gentle herbs can also be helpful in supporting kidney function. Here are a few of the most popular ones. First, we have dandelion root, which acts as a mild diuretic and supports both kidney and liver function. Then we have nettle leaf, which is rich in minerals and anti-inflammatory. Then hibiscus, which supports healthy blood pressure and uric acid levels. And finally, corn silk, which soothes the urinary tract and helps with water retention. You can use these in teas or supplements, but again, don't use herbs to replace the basics. So take them to support what you've already built in the first part of this protocol. All in all, 
Kidney detox isn't about doing some fancy cleanse or taking a ridiculous number of supplements. It's about working with your body's natural filtration system and creating the right environment for it to do its job. Again, don't jump into heavy supplements before your hydration and mineral balance are sorted. So start with the basics and then go from there. Just as a side note, if you're interested in even more detox strategies and in-depth tutorials on how to eliminate modern toxins like microplastics, heavy metals, excess estrogen, or forever chemicals, make sure to check the description where I link my detox masterclass. It shows you how to eliminate all of them and covers diet, supplements, dosing, and more. For more info, just open the description. It will be listed under my programs.